We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome to Pod Maverick After Dark, the Kinderson. I'm joined, as always, by fellow editor at Mavs Moneyball, Josh Bow. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing okay. How are you doing tonight? Okay. Um, you know, we recorded a preview of this series last night, which I then forgot to publish until like nine o'clock this morning, like an idiot. And watching tonight's 117.95 Dallas Mavericks loss was a confirmation that in terms of when it comes to previewing how dangerous the Thunder are, we know what we're talking about. And that was um, it's a tough game. I, I, I'm i sort of struggling to, to figure out how to talk about it because, you know, the Mavericks ended up losing by, by 22. Um, the game was close. At one point, the Mavericks were down by one? Or did they hold the 66-65 lead? No, they were down by one. They're down by one um, in the third quarter. Uh, Mark Dagonall called a timeout. Um, they Thunder came out and hit, I think, three consecutive threes mm-hmm. and were off to a boat race. And the Mavericks never really, never really got back in it. And I, I sort when I say I struggled to know where to talk about, it, I really. I, I struggle to know where to begin because when you lose a game like this, where you're right there with it, um, the loss ends up being about a lot of things, not one or two things. And I'm sort of curious as to what you think the main culprit for, for sort of how the game got out of control, like what that was. And then I think we should sort of uh, walk through, you know, sort of li- quite literally recap elements of this game and then circle back to, to managing elements for the Mavericks in this game. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of funny. I feel like everything we talked about in terms of what the Mavericks need to do to beat the Thunder, uh, they didn't do. Um, the main culprit's mm-hmm. probably their half-court offense stunk. And it stunk all playoffs. We talked about mm-hmm. that in the preview. We it really has. About- yeah, right. we talked about that uh, in our preview podcast uh, that we recorded last night. We said, hey, you know, their best moments against the Clippers offensively was because they're generating all these steals and blocks and turnovers and right. and they're getting off in, in, in the, into transition and they're scoring uh, incredibly well in transition. And quietly, their half-court offense kind of stunk for most of the Clippers series. Um, it stunk again tonight and we talked about how, hey, are they going to – they don't have the athletic advantage that they had in the Clippers series. Are they going to be able to generate offense without having a huge steals block advantage? Lo and behold, the 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 Mavericks had 13 combined steals and blocks, which is still pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Uh, but the Thunder had 16. 
Um, so they didn't have that huge advantage. And the Mavericks had 15 turnovers and the Thunder had nine. So the half court was ter- the half court offense was bad. They had limited opportunities to get into transition because they just didn't turn the Thunder over like they did to the Clippers. And then, you know, the Thunder had 28 free throw attempts and they had, you know, obviously they had a majority of those in the first half, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually. But when you're taking, you know, when you're, you're, you're sending a team to the free throw lines that often you're going to have to walk the ball up and play transition offense or not. Sure. Transition, sorry. You have to play half court offense and their half court offense repeatedly failed them throughout the night. I, I actually think their defense was okay. Like I don't really do have much qualms with their defensive strategy or even the defensive execution, they kind of play defense like they've been playing since yeah, March 1st. I agree. And the Thunder just made threes, which is what we said. They're going to give up threes. And the Thunder are a good three-point shooting team. They're a better three-point shooting team than the Clippers. But you can't – they hung their defense out to dry. Like, it was mm-hmm. it was a dam waiting to break mm-hmm. because their offense continually came up dry almost possession after possession after possession. And you can't expect your defense, as good as it's been since the trade deadline, to keep up with a team on the road, you know, a team playing at home like the Thunder that's as good as the Thunder. You can't keep giving them that many chances to to push. And and even if they're not pushing, like it's just so much easier for an offense to score off a missed shot when they're not taking the ball out of the basket or from a free throw or a made shot. Like well, they. What do you expect? The, the, the defense just can't hold up if, you, if you're continuously bricking shots in your half-court offense. So so long-time listener Bobby Chapman in the comments with the hilarious still no mention of the refs, what is this podcast? And the main reason I don't really want to talk about the refs is because when the Mavericks went on their third-quarter run to make it interesting, the defense was connected and the Mavericks were pushing. And I think that connectivity on the Dallas defense is going to be there. Look, if Shea Gillis Alexander is gonna is gonna chase the Dwayne Wade free throw award of getting sixty five thousand free throws off of bullshit, then we just have to live with it. There's no other way around it, and I'm not particularly interested in talking about it. Um, frankly, the way the refs called the game in the third quarter was completely different than they called it in the first half. It was very it, funny. I think like, uh, I, as Shea only had two free throw attempts in the second. Right, half. right. So it's like you, know, you, you, you. you the Mavericks have to believe in their de- defensive game plan and go from there. Okay. So first quarter of this game was really horrendously hilarious where Kyrie Irving of all people had nerves and had four absolutely are you okay turnovers um, that were almost like laugh out loud worthy. And, and Jason Kidd said in between quarters, um, Kai took full. Ad- I just called him Kai. I promised myself I would never call him Kai. His name is Kyrie Irving. I'm a 40 year old man. I cannot do that. Um, Kyrie Irving took responsibility and basically handled the ball well the rest of the game. It was no, but the Mavericks as a whole, I think they had six turnovers in the first quarter, really sloppy ish basketball. Um, and, and the Mavericks sort of just hung around, hung around. They would answer different uh, Oklahoma City runs with runs of their own. And after one, you know, one period of play, I, it, it was tied. It was either tied or yeah, it was tied 23 all, I think. Yeah. And the Mavericks came out in the second quarter, took a quick lead because of PJ Washington fouls. We had early Tim Hardaway Jr. minutes, which I cannot wait to circle back on later on in this game. Um, shame on you, Jason Kidd. What are the fuck are we doing? Tim Hardaway minutes in, in 2024. My God. Um, the game started to get away from Dallas in the second quarter. The fouls uh, were, were clearly frustrating everyone. Um, and the Thunder took a double-digit lead, but then uh, w- walked into halftime with a trailing 60-51. to 51. Um, In the third quarter, the Mavericks made a, made a rally, uh, got within a single point, and then Oklahoma City hit the uh, press, the we're going, to, we're going to hit all our threes button. And, <laughs> yep. And I'm seeing some like weird comments in our in our chat right now. It's like, oh, it's lucky threes. It's lucky three. No, the Mavericks defense is quite literally designed to wall off the paint, and you're going to have to give up shots. You cannot be ev- you cannot be everywhere all at once. And the Thunder have good shooters. They play a five out offense a lot of the time. Chet Holmgren, uh, Matthew Phillips, and MavsMoneyBall.com said before the game that Chet is a fake good shooter. And when nobody's near you, you can hit shots. 
This is why I want I want Derek Lively to be able to take an occasional three in a game just because I've heard he can shoot. I'd love to see it. Um, and and so at that point, it was a boat race. The Mavericks didn't really have much of a chance to get back into it. Uh, their offense was putrid, which was was largely why they didn't have much of a chance to get back into it. And I think if we if we acknowledge um, early on that the offensive grossness is a big part of the Dallas challenge with what they they need to do, to me that's like the and, and where does the offense start with? I'm not laying it entirely at his feet, but the offensive ineptitude was was driven primarily by. Um, the umpteenth straight horrendous shooting game from from Luka Doncic, and yeah. I, I, I I hate to I'm not laying it at his feet, but if he's the engine and the engine is busted, I don't know what you do. Yeah, when you're trying to talk adjustments, that's the hard part because if Luka's not Luka, then we can talk we can we can talk all we want about hey they need to do some stuff differently in the half court, but if he can't execute that because for a variety of reasons his knee hurts whatever uh that's the series like he has to look like himself at some point can the mavericks help him along a little bit more yeah i think so but if he's this hampered physically like we we said in the preview podcast that's taking away a lot of things that they might want to counter with because yep. if luca's knee hurts to the point that you don't want him setting screens then you know it, I'm I'm struggling to think of ways that you can get creative here if you're if you're petrified of him taking more contact because the answer is he needs to be in the paint more. But if his knee hurts and it's harder for him to get in the paint, and if you don't want him setting screens because you don't want to invite unnecessary contact, I'm struggling to think of a way for him to get to the rim reliably without further injuring his knee or, or further getting beat up physically. Um that's the challenge. And, sure. and that's why he needs to hit threes and he's not hitting threes. And maybe he's not hitting threes because his knee hurts. And it's like, it just makes it hard to talk about because it's, it's clear he's not healthy. Um, and I don't want to make excuses for him necessarily because he's playing, he's played 41 minutes. He averaged 42 and a half minutes in the Clippers series. But at the other end of the spectrum, like we watched him this season. This is yeah. not the Luca we saw in the regular season. It's just not, you know, like, no just the way he's moving around it's just not it's not the same uh, so he's one of eight on threes tonight so he's 17 of 75 from three so let me let me do some 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 math there i'm not very good at math sorry guys he is 15 percent worse from three so far in the playoffs than he was in the regular season and i saw one comment in there oh you're just making excuses it wasn't like it wasn't a problem in the th in the Clipper series. Yes, it fucking was. The reason the Mavericks didn't sl uh, sweep the terrible Clippers is because the Mavericks couldn't shoot. I, I like that's just a weird comment to make. I, I don't flat out don't understand this. And you know, while we're here, just so we can kind of clear this up, I don't disagree with anyone who says let's have more Kyrie Irving initiated offense. I don't disagree. Problem was it. Or when you when he has four first quarter turnovers, it's like uh oh. Well, but not only that, no, that part honestly doesn't bother me. Okay. At what point do we have to acknowledge the fact that Kyrie doesn't want that? I, I'm sorry, like he doesn't do it. We've had 50 plus games of him kind of meandering around the court in the first quarter. That is what he does. I'm not mad at him for it. I've accepted it because he plays great the other three quarters. And, and he's so also the, a good off ball player. Like he's absolutely. And he's he's a good absolutely a great off ball, off ball player. So it's, it's one of these things where it's like Luca needs to let Kyrie do this. No guys, the Mavericks need to make that decision together and the Mavericks actually need to implement it. That includes Kyrie coming out and doing it. Really? It really does. And that's not a criticism. That's just something that as a team, they have to want to do. And so while we're here, while we're talking Kyrie and Luca, this is the part that we have you've talked about for six games now that uh, and well, going back to last game. So seven games that I would like you to sort of expound upon further. And I'm going to attempt to bully you into talking about it uh, <laughs> in uh, writing about it for MavsMoneyBall.com, because then maybe Jason Kidd might implement it. Why aren't Luca and Kyrie in any sets together? It is driving me crazy. 
Only thing I can think of is that with his knee, they just don't want him setting screens. But then again, I don't know why Kyrie's not setting more screens for Luca. Yes. I think I saw it maybe once today, but like with your half court offense struggling, they should be spamming that like it's NBA 2K. Right. <laughs> like there's no, there's no I time don't left. Care if you bring Lou Dort. Like the concern yeah. has debris. You bring Lou Dort and Jalen Williams together. Oh no. Well, like, try it. And if they do that, then do, you know, do something else. Trying it. Yeah. <laughs> They need to do something like that. And if they're not going to do that, then they need to run Kyrie off more staggered screens off ball. They did that like once or twice. I just, but, I'm not getting it. The half court offense is it's, it's, it's either it's with Luca and Kyrie. So this isn't like a, a Luca. No, this is a team criticism. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's either Luca Kyrie high screen and roll and they go from there. And it's like, no one else is really moving around. Um, the thunder are totally content with it. There were total, some possessions where, they did the thing that we talked about where they're staying home to shooters or staying home to the lob threat and they're letting Kyrie Luca work one-on-one because they just don't want the role players to beat them. Funny enough, I actually thought in that third quarter spurt that the Mavericks got it down to one point lead or one point deficit. They started mm-hmm. sitting two at Luca. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like a thunder fan, you know, I'm, but I'm just like watching the game. I'm like, what are the thunder doing? Like Luca was five of 15 from the floor at that point, And they're doubling Luca and letting him right. make these great passes. And then and they cut the deficit to one, and then they kind of cut that out, and they let Luca try to shoot a little bit more. And Luca finished six of nineteen, so he was only what like one of one of four after that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they need to tr- they need to, to to do a little bit more. They did a little bit more in terms of like small small pick and rolls, but funny enough, it wasn't with Kyrie. They let Josh Green set some screens for Luca. They let Tim Hardaway Jr. set some screens for Luca. Obviously, the Tim Hardaway Jr. part did not work. He was terrible. Uh, Josh Green, mixed results. I am mostly okay. mostly positive. For he what I expect it. from Josh Green, mostly positive. Yeah, I don't think you can expect too much more, yeah. you know, other than he, he makes more shots. But, like, I don't know how many more shots you can expect him to make. It was pretty indicative of the game. Luca had an all-time pass in this game. I don't know if you remember. I think it was in the third quarter where he was on the left side of the floor and getting doubled uh, kind of where the three point line that bends from above the break to the corner. And he was doubled. And I felt like he teleported the ball from there to the weak side corner to Josh green, who was wide open for a corner three and he missed it. It was one of the best passes. I mean, there was no one within 25 feet of it. It was an incredible pass. I'm going to have to clip it for my post. Like I was, I mean, Luca makes that pass in his sleep, and I and but it still amazes me every time he does it. And and Green missed it, and that's not a knock on Green. He missed it, whatever. And then the Thunder came back up the floor, and Isaiah Joe kind of hit like a contested three off one dribble pass. Uh, and I and that's kind of the summer that kind of summed up the game exactly. Like the, the yeah. Thunder players hit their threes, the Mavericks did not, and that's going to happen. And like we said, the Mavericks defense is going to invite that a little bit. Here's where the threes might become a little bit of a problem. You say, okay, defensively, can they make some changes? The Thunder were 5 of 11 from corner three, so you don't want to give up corner threes. The Mavericks have been pretty good about giving up above the break threes who they want to shoot, but their Achilles heel, you know, if you have to say the one bad thing that they've been doing since the trade deadline when their defense has been good is they give up threes, and they probably give up too many corner threes. Like They've still been doing that even when their defense is good. They just got some good shooting luck, uh, and the Thunder made 5 of 11 from corner three, so that, that part stinks. But Kirk... Thunder were 15 of 28 in the restricted area, 53 and a half percent. That's amazing. It's really, really good. They're like four. You can't 15, ask for more. Four of 15 in the paint outside the restricted area against the Shea Gilgis Alexander team. Did your job. They made threes. So, yeah. and again, that those threes kind of snowballed on top of the bad offense. Like if you just make better offense and you force the Thunder to play more half court ball, because I feel like I don't, you know, I'll have to look back. How many of the Thunder threes kind of came off scrambled possessions that felt like they were bringing the ball in transition? Maybe not a transition score, but off of a transition opportunity that flowed into that like secondary break, having the Mavericks off balance. So if their half court offense can be like that's the key to this game to the rest of the series for me. Can the Mavericks half court offense be respectable enough that they can force the Thunder into more uncomfortable positions? Do you understand how stupid it is that we're talking about this with two of the greatest offensive talents in the multiverse? What the fuck are we doing? I don't know. Like the Thunder aren't that great. Like Thunder are long. The Thunder are talented. The Thunder are connected. So I don't want to insult them. But like good offense can beat good defense. We're not running good offense. This is ugh, this is killing me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what and what did we talk? You know, sorry. Can I 
Please, no, no I, I sound of, like a prepubescent boy right now. My voice did, is cracking. Did you want to go to a break, or can I hit it on another point? Uh, hit on another point, then we'll go to okay. break. Remember one of the things we talked about about this series that's going to be trouble is the Clippers had a litany of non-threatening players on the offensive side of the ball that the Mavericks totally took advantage of, shading their defense, letting those guys catch the ball open. And then we talked about this record last night. Thunder don't have that many weak spots as the Clippers did. Like they're going to have their work cut out for them if they're going to want to shade and help. Uh, you can obviously help off Dort and Giddy and the and the, the Mavericks did, and those two guys combined for nine points. But Chet Holgrim can hit open shots. Jalen Williams can hit open shots, and they were actually kind of lucky he played so poorly yeah, he, in the first yeah, half, yeah. where this game could have been <laughs> over early. Um, obviously, Shea is great, but like, other Jalen Williams that comes off the bench, 11 points, hit his shots. Aaron, Aaron Wiggins, who's been pretty solid for, mm-hmm. for a couple months now. Isaiah Joe, Casey Wallace, like those guys can hit shots. And I, I would trust those guys to hit shot. Maybe not at this rate, maybe not 45.7% from three, which the Thunder shot. But I would have more confidence in those guys being a little bit more consistent in their shot making than Russell Westbrook. Mason Plumley, sure. Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying the Thunder are going to make 45% of their threes this whole series, but they have more consistent shot makers than the Clippers did. So that's going to be a challenge for the Mavericks and how they want to help. And even with that, even with that, they still executed, I think, for the most part, their defensive game plan. They walled off the paint. Shea had a pretty mediocre shooting night for him, 8 of 19 is okay. He hit two threes, which he hadn't hit threes in the first round. Like, I really think that they take this Shea game, you know, and they're going to hope that they get a better whistle, which they probably will. If they don't in game two, they certainly should in game three. But I think they take the Shea game, like, shoot, shooting-wise. Like, yeah. the free throws oh, yeah. suck. But he didn't dominate the ball with his scoring in terms of making shots. Like, he just got to the free throw line a bunch in the first half, and then the role players hit shots in the second half. So, again, I don't it feels so stupid. The Thunder scored 117 points. They made 16 threes. Just don't have a lot of qualms with the defense. Like, I really feel like this was an offense. Read That's the reason for the loss. Sure. All right. We're a little more than halfway through the pod. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. If you're here, you're uh, watching us live. We record live after every game. If you could do Josh and I a favor, considering hitting the like button on the stream, also subscribing while you're down there, and you can do something within your subscription to actually get notified when Josh and I go live. We record everything live. Why do we record everything live? Because Josh and I have day jobs, and it's a lot easier to just record this up instead of posting something to YouTube. We also do a secondary post-game show where you can come uh, fire off your takes, argue with me if you want. Uh, you know, just kind of get those feelings out. Uh, it's either called group therapy or Mavs uh, party, depending on when the Mavericks win. Tonight's going to be a group therapy because we're a little sad that we're lost. Those of you listening on the audio stream, if you could uh, leave us a review, very much appreciate it. Love all the reviews I'm seeing on Spotify and Apple. Very grateful for those. Uh, and if you would like to shoot me an email talking to basketball, I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, last but not least, we're going to insert some ads and then we will uh, be right back on the audio stream. Those of you who are waiting live, you're going to have uh, five weird seconds of silence. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And we're back. Uh... Before we kind of kick off the second half of the show, I want to shout out to uh, folks who left us tips along with comments. King, 
uh, says, do you think Jason Kidd pulled the trigger too soon? They were down 12. I honestly don't remember how much they were down, but it was. They were down by a little bit more than that. It was starting to down, look. They were down 21, I think, when they pulled all the starters. It was starting to look a little grindy. I mean, Luca missed a bat. Like, Luca missed a really, like, awful three. It, it, it was just. The the flag needed to be waved is the answer. But uh, King, thank you so much for for the tip and for the question. Really appreciate that. Wade uh, shouts us out and he says, "On a bad street, can't listen again live tonight, but I l- will listen to you guys tomorrow, even though it's not going to be fun. You boys look sharp as usual. Go Mavs! Yeah, I forgot to comb my hair. I got but, my ring light, baby. I bust out the upgrade for the playoffs. It's, it's that's what guys. we're here. That's what we're here for. It's it's really exciting. Yeah. Oh, and then one more tip. Shout out from Small Dog in a sweatshirt. Hate our lack of sets. I like that we have the option to run high pick and roll, but show me some screens and off ball action. We stand so still." Don't disagree, man. Don't disagree. It's not like we need to run a set every time, but we also don't need to run a screen and roll every time. Um, what do we want to go to from here? It sounded like you you were revving up in the first half of the pod about Tim Hardaway Jr. Do I want to just give it's you It's not floor? on Tim. It's not Tim's fault. He's just going into the game. And I get that Dante Exum is, is a pumpkin, but Exum is why you won games for a significant portion of the season and you play that man three minutes. Like what does Tim bring right now? I don't understand it. He was awful. He wasn't the reason they were bad, but it's just like one for five in 17 minutes, all four horrendous misses from the three point line. We're talking trebuchet style things where it looks like it's going to, you know, hurt one of the Oklahoma city thunder fans. I just, I don't get that. That's something that's a little bit confusing to me. Um, I need, uh, I'm just, I'm frustrated with the bench guys that aren't named Josh green is, is sort of where I'm, where I'm settling right now. How many times have you said that in your life? I know. I mean, Josh came in and did what he was asked to do. The moment was a little too big for him on some of these wide open threes. I mean, frankly, it feels like Josh shoots the, the ball better when he's contested. Um, as stupid as that sounds. Yeah. It's probably, even though he made three of them, which is three of eight is not, it's not a great percentage, but it's not horrible for thirty-seven point five percent. You live with it. That's yeah, great. you live with yeah. that for sure. I think the Thunder are going to be okay with him taking eight three pointers. Oh yeah, I mean they they <laughs> like, left him open. Yeah. Like, yeah, but he has to shoot in your head. So, yeah, so it's it's a it's a catch twenty two because it's not like you don't want him to shoot it, but it's like if he is your if he's the guy taking the most three pointers besides Luca in a game, like probably need to see how you can diversify that a little bit more. Like get maybe. Ky- like Kyrie had four. Kyrie needs more spot up threes. He needs significantly more spot up threes. And maybe the Thunder are just hugging him too tight. But if they're hugging him too tight, then that should open things up to backdoor cuts, screens. If a defender is playing you that tight, rub off of you know rub off a screen and 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 lose him. You know what I mean? Um, so they need to do something there. But I think the bench, the big you know Tim Hardaway Jr. playing. There's nothing can't get angry because it's like i'm not saying he didn't he played poorly but i think kid was just like okay our offense stinks let's just see like let's see what he does in but, game but two like if he plays 20 play minutes with the and, rule then and his yeah, first two threes were horrible i know but if he plays say 17 to 20 minutes again in game two and scores another two points then i think then i think people can get out the pitchforks the real story to me was lively being maybe the most ineffective he's been in a long time and he's played well against the Thunder this season. So that was pretty big. He had two he had more turnovers than made baskets, which has not happened to him a lot in his rookie season. Um, two points, four rebounds, no blocks, one of three from the floor. He was he it's so funny because like he's a 20-year-old rookie, and that's been the thing with him, is like he doesn't look like a rookie. He looked no, like a rookie today. He did today, yeah. He he and got he got embarrassed by his class by his rookie classmate a couple and that got in his head like that uh, Chet blocked him on a really awful hook shot attempt and he just turned into a pumpkin. Yeah. And with Maxi out, you can maybe afford one of Gafford or Lively not giving you a ton. Uh, Gafford missed a lot of shots, which was maybe another thing to talk about, but otherwise he played, he played well. Um, But if, if, if Lively's, you can't have, one of Gafford and Lively playing poorly with Maxi out. Like, that's just the thing. Because with Maxi in, then you have another option. You could play 
small sure. ball five, or you can play Maxi next to Gafford if Lively can't bring it, or if Gafford can't bring it, you do reverse it, put Lively in with Maxi, or you play Maxi small ball five. With Lively playing poorly with Maxi out, there's just they don't. That's it, right? They don't have any options they can turn to besides playing Gafford a lot of minutes. Um, and I don't know if that's necessarily the answer, even though he, I thought he did some good things. Like it's just they need both of those guys to play well. They're a two. They're a tandem. They're a two-headed monster, and the Mavericks have had, I think, their most success this season when they're both playing well. Um, mm-hmm. And they don't have the security blanket of Maxi if one of them isn't. So I thought that was very noticeable. He had, he had zero. Not only did he not have much of an impact on the game, I mean, he had negative, like, single game plus minus. I'm sorry, I don't even really want to reference it. His was his was pretty minus. He, I felt every bit of his negative plus minus. Like he he. It was just a rough game for him. Not his fault. Like it's, he's a rookie. It's going to happen. But sure, that's that's going to cost them in this series. Yeah, the the fouls seem to also bother him. He had one. He got on a real health. frustrated. He got because it was it was the kind of and you know mm-hmm. this is I understand you know, why. Yeah. yeah, there was Lively was pretty big on the defense against the Clippers because they're letting. I frankly thought they let him get away with a lot against Los Angeles, and he met somebody in the rim. Mm-hmm. at the rim in the second quarter for the kind of thing where I'm just like, they haven't called that a foul all playoffs. No. And it was just, it was like, Oh, okay. just a quick whistle. Like one of those, like, cause the, the Mavericks had a six, like probably like seven, eight possessions out of like 10 or 12 where they got called for fouls in that second quarter. And he just, that really sapped his aggressiveness. I was, I was very surprised by it. Yeah. yeah. They, they got a, you know, this is just a dust it off, shake it off try to play better in the next game for him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's yeah. No, not much more to say. But Can I be petty? Gonna... I want to be petty. Okay. So I came into this game, and uh, one of the things I talked about last night uh, when, when you and I were recording a preview was oh, the Mavericks have gotten killed <laughs> on on three prior to this game on three out of their four game ones. The only, well, the only game one they didn't get killed in was Utah where Luka didn't play, and they actually had a chance to win that game. It's just – I. It's, I don't remember what happened, but there were some missed three opportunities at the end. It's neither here nor there. This now makes four out of five games, and frankly, every single one that Lucas played, though I'm not hanging it on him, um, game ones during the this tenure of playoff basketball for the Mavericks under this current coaching regime where they have been down by at least 20 points. Um, I don't know what to do about that because – when you're on the road on every single game one, you're quite literally not supposed to win. Like you're always on, you're always the uh, the underdog. On the flip side, I just don't like getting the shit kicked out of me. You know, so so it's like, am I, I making understand. too much out of this? Where where? T- t- tell me if I'm wrong. Right. I'm, I'm fine if if I'm being ridiculous can, about this. Can I be a coward and say you're both 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 sides are right? Can I be a coward centrist and say? I understand why you're mad because you're fan. You should be the Mavericks just got dump trucked on national TV in a playoff game. Like why people should be mad. Like you're a fan. Like that's part of the fan experience. Like get mad. Like your team looked crappy on national TV in, in the first game of a, of a, of a playoff series. Like what you're going to get mad. But also sure. I understand the other side of it where it's like, yeah, game one, if you're always playing game one on the road, you're probably not going to win a lot of them. So and the series isn't over. Thunder got to get three more. You still haven't played a home game yet. So, you know, I get both sides of it. I, I'm going to take the coward, the cowards right there. Because I think a big thing we both talk about is like we, we're trying, you know, I don't always follow this rule. And I admit it. I'm trying to be better about not telling people how to fan. And yeah. you know, sometimes I get ba- I'm bad about it because sometimes I'll tell people not to get mad. And uh, that's, you know, you're allowed to get mad. Like you, it's an emotional game. The whole fandom is short for fanatic or whatever like it's part of fandom like you're gonna get a little irrational every now and then like to ask a fan to just be oh just be like oh i'm calm cool and collected like it's okay this series isn't over yet like there's time for that but right after a game you could be pissed off so i'm I'm just trying to be better about that no i and i think i think i'll wake up tomorrow and really by the time i make it through group therapy I, I like the Mavericks defensive game plan. And when yeah. you come down to like, okay, the Mavericks need to play better on offense. I don't find myself frustrated with coach kid on that. I do wish that he would make them call. Like I, I specifically I'm since I'm such a shit, I texted Tim Cato and I said, you need to ask this question. If you get called upon, 
Why aren't they running any Luka Kyrie actions? I want to know. There's not a good answer for it other than the fact it feels like they fucking forgot. Yeah, because the only thing I I know I've said it like a billion times, but the only thing I think of is they just don't want Lucas setting screens, screens with his knee messed up. But again, Ooh. okay, but why isn't Kyrie setting screens? All right, go ahead. What did you? You just reminded me of something. So, um, Grant uh, kept talking oh, about this during the, the game. Screens, not the, well. Yeah, Luca was well, hanging. Pause. This was like if you want to make a real criticism of Luca beyond the shooting, he was not using his screens appropriately tonight. What a wild, weird thing to say about Luka Doncic, right? But he was yeah. right. Like, like you watch the replay, and like there were three offensive fouls called because Luka got sped up. Like that's how you can tell Luka's having a, a rough game that the guy who moves at his own pace was moving too quick. Anyway, sorry, I just thought of that. No, no, you're you're right. I mean that that's a good way to kind of encompass like how like it's just off. Like it's just not it's yeah. not right, you know. And we've watched him. We've watched. We've literally watched every single game that this guy has played in the NBA, uh, and we talk about him extensively every single time because he is the fulcrum. He's the engine. He doesn't look like himself, and he's never. I can't remember the last time I've seen him play this many games consecutively, shooting this poorly. Yeah. Now I said shooting this poorly because he has had moments in these playoffs where he has done other things. Yes. Uh, to compensate. Um, Tonight was not, you know, tonight wasn't one. I get five turnovers. He made a couple of good passes. His defense was uh, yeah, well, because they weren't they guys, weren't but, pushing the ball. He wasn't able yeah. to do what they did in Game Six against the Clippers, where he was getting into the teeth of the defense early in the shot clock because they were they were running after after misses because they were, and, I mean, they were turning over. The, that's the right. Clippers a bunch. The Thunder only had nine yeah. turnovers for the game. So. Yeah, so it's a different it's a different deal there. Um, but I, have you ever? We've never seen him shoot like the like. So this is seven. I thought the shots looked a little better tonight. Is that stupid? Is that wishful thinking? Did he do? Can I? He didn't me... short arm like he was short against the Clippers, and that was driving me crazy. He, once again, this trend continues. He was three of five from mid range, so his mid range jumper has just been significant. He was better. bad close though today. He missed some bunnies in the key. Yeah, oh four in the paint outside the restricted area. Two of two at the rim, but only. Two of two at the rim, only two attempts at the rim. Like, remember in 2020 when he, he would like average like seven or eight shots at the rim? Like, every I mean, game? earlier this year, his like his uh, Kevin O'Connor put, shared some stat around the 40 game mark where he was like leading the league. He was ahead of Giannis, I think, in terms of like in, in efficiency, but not attempts. Yeah. This yeah. is he was career low in share of shots at the rim this year. Yeah. Um, but that was okay because he comp- he was hitting 38% of his threes, which was okay. That's totally fine. Like, but now he's not hitting his threes and he's still not getting to the rim more. It's like, I don't know. It's just, they can maybe drum some stuff up a little bit better, but sure. I need to see, we need to see more Derek Jones Jr. Backdoor cuts, more PJ Washington backs. Like those guys aren't doing like, I mean, we're watching though. No one's moving. Like if it's not Luca or and the big man setting the screen, everyone's standing, and it's just kind of the worst of the Mavericks half court uh, habits of, that we've seen over the last like five years. Sure. If if we want to end on a positive note, because I kind of do. Um, yeah. If I'm the other team and the Mavericks have the ball in transition, the last cool play the Mavericks effectively did was Luca finding Kyrie for that transition three, mm-hmm. where Luca had his eyes on Kyrie the whole time. And it's just so pretty when he shoots that thing from the right wing. Kyrie Irving, I mean. I just, I love it. I that love transition that three is, it's automatic. I just love that shot. Anyway. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, we got one more tip. Shout out to Clemen uh, for giving us a tip. Really appreciate that, my man. Um, all right, so I'm going to hang around here, and we're going to do our secondary postgame show. Josh, you get to go edit some things at MavsMoneyBall.com and see what we come up with. Everyone else is going to hang out and hopefully come talk a little basketball here with me at the after show group therapy. Guys listening on the audio stream, uh, be looking for that at some point on – what is tomorrow? Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. We'll talk soon, and go Mavs. Go Mavs.